Welcome. Apparently there are plans afoot to try to close down the Paint Branch Golf Course and allow the University of Maryland to develop it for some purpose or other. I think this plan is wrong and this video is a set of counter arguments to that plan. I hope you'll watch it and then pass it on to others to try to get this plan stopped. First, let's talk a little bit about what Paint Branch is. It's shown here in green. It's a nine hole golf course on about 70 acres of land. Uh, some people argue that this is the best course in Maryland for working on your short game. That's because it's short, but challenging. It's located just off of Highway 193, so has good and easy access from the surrounding area. But the land itself is swampy and is unsuitable for development, I think. Paint Branch is a unique facility. It is the only par 3 course in northern Prince George's County. It is 2,035 yards, so it's not very long, and it's par 31. The people that use it have rated it at a level of 4.3 out of 5, which is a very high rating for a golf course. Recently, Prince George's County spent a lot of money upgrading and improving it. It would seem a shame to put all that uh, investment to waste by now tearing down the course. And the other thing is that the rates to play the course are very affordable. People on a fixed income like seniors uh, need a relatively inexpensive course to play that is not too much beyond their physical ability and Paint Branch meets both of those needs. The facilities at Paint Branch are excellent. They have an excellent and convenient driving range. As you can see here, it has lots of uh, bays to hit balls from, which is actually useful in these times of social distancing. Uh, but it means it can accommodate a lot of people at one time. A section of it is covered so you can practice when it's raining or in the winter. And I've often seen many players from the University of Maryland come here to practice rather than use their own uh, driving range on their own course, which is expensive and um, not very good. A few years ago they built a new first tee facility, here it is, um, and it would seem a shame to go let all that expense go to waste. There are lots of convenient parking right by the clubhouse and by the course, so you don't have to lug your clubs all over the place in order to access the facility. It also has two putting greens and a chipping and putting facility which is useful for practicing before you go out to play. Seniors need a course like this. First of all, because we've lost so many other local courses, Glendale, Patuxent Greens, Lake Arbor, Cross Creek and Marlboro, to name but a few. It's one of the few courses that seniors uh, can walk because it's short enough, but also are allowed to walk. Many courses now insist on using these uh, golf carts and that's not very good exercise for folks like us. The course is challenging, being relatively narrow and with lots of overhanging trees and lakes and things of that sort, but it's not too long, so it is in fact easy to walk. In fact, it's enjoyable to walk. I think it's unnecessary to develop this land. This white area shows uh, the Paint Branch Golf Course. If you look at the map closely, you'll see there's lots of other areas around here that are undeveloped or underdeveloped. For example, this land just to the west of Paint Branch, a wildlife protected area. So what would be the impact of developing Paint Branch on all the plants and animals that live there? Also, just to the north, there's a huge area of basically undeveloped land. Whatever the University of Maryland wants to do could easily be done there rather than on the site of Paint Branch. There's another park just to the south of Paint Branch which actually used to be part of the Paint Branch Golf Course has been changed into a community park. However, just a few yards south of that, there's a second park, and just a bit to the east of that, there's a third park. This to me seems to be a problem in that we're getting rid of the one golf course, but leaving three parks right next to each other untouched. There's also this area down here in the bottom left, uh, which could be developed. Now much of this land already belongs to the University of Maryland, so why aren't they developing that land themselves rather than trying to take a facility that is used by seniors? Then there's the question of what's going to happen to all the animals that live in the area. 
What's going to be the impact on the wildlife? I've played there many times and seen uh, all sorts of animals, deer, foxes, squirrels and groundhogs. Because the area is very wet and marshy, uh, we see lots of reptiles such as um, frogs, snakes, turtles, even freshwater crayfish and lizards. And of course, there are birds galore, water birds and also ordinary birds. Where I've seen red-tailed hawks, geese, blue herons, red-winged blackbirds, and even now and then see the odd bald eagle circling overhead. What's going to happen to all these animals when uh, this land is developed and not left as open park land as it is with the golf course? So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? The seniors that live in northern Prince George's County need Paint Branch as a recreation facility to play golf on. It should be remembered that most of these seniors have worked and lived in the county for many decades, contributing to the tax base and to the community's way of life. Many have served their country in the military as well. Is it too much to ask after all that sacrifice to allow them to have just a few acres of land to play golf on? I don't think so. Yes, golf facilities don't make a profit these days, but nor do parks or schools. And perhaps we should just look on this golf facility as a park that's dedicated to the health and well-being of seniors. I've shown that there are alternative areas that could be developed for this new development, whatever it is, rather than using the Paint Branch Golf Course. A quick check of the University of Maryland College Park campus shows that it has endowments totaling $355 million. Perhaps they could spend a little bit of that and buy some alternative land somewhere else to do this development rather than taking over the facilities of senior citizens and other people that use this course. If you agree with me on this, please contact your local councilman and also the Parks and Recreation Department and tell them to find alternatives to taking over Paint Branch Golf Course. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, goodbye.